All right, so welcome to this Sweetwater slash Nam vlog. This is going to be a crazy few days for me, and I wanted to document it all and share it with you all. Today we flew. We, what did we leave it? Like five thirty this morning. Yeah. To fly to Indiana for Sweetwater, we are here to basically be the house band for a recording workshop that they're doing with their engineer Sean, and they picked us and flew us out here to basically be their studio band. So we're really excited about it. We're going to be recording one of Jessica's songs, and we are, this is cool for me. If you know me, then you know that I'm a baseball nut. Our hotel here is literally in the outfield of a minor league park. So tonight when we get back, we're going to check out a game. Um, they're playing tonight at 7 o'clock. So we're going to go over to Sweetwater right now, and I guess we're going to kind of do like a little bit of a line check. We brought no gear, so everything is kind of... Uh, we're having fingers crossed that everything's going to be great over there. I'm sure it will be with all the stuff that they have, but we have nothing with us. So we're just going to go basically find out what tools we're going to be able to use for this. Um, I'm going to be filming it all from, from my vantage point and hopefully get some cool footage as we go. And then after this, I'm leaving at like 6 a.m. on Saturday and I'm flying all the way to Anaheim for the NAM show. I'm just going to be spending the Saturday there. And I have no idea what to expect there, but I'm going to be having the camera and documenting the process as we go along. So for right now, we are about to head over. Like I said, we're going to do a little bit of a line check at Sweetwater and see what kind of gear we're going to be dealing with. I'm really excited and I really don't know what to expect. So let's do it. This has to be the weirdest sensation ever, not having any gear. <laughs> I feel just like, I feel naked. Yeah. And, yeah, my, and my back's not going to hurt after carrying stuff all day. All I have to carry is you people. One, right? <laughs> How many buttons did you hit? I didn't hit that. No, I'm telling you, there's something weird with this elevator. Because before, look, it's still saying we're on two. Yeah, but that's because I didn't hit the one button. Oh, well, I didn't hit one. Now we're on two. Now we're on two. Now we're on two. I didn't hit two. Stick this thing in, all right? <laughs> before it said two, two, and we didn't go there. Oh. Hey. Hey. How's traffic right now? It's terrible. Looks yeah. like it. <laughs> Feels like we're back home in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite Live. What? 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 Yeah, right oh, we it's missed it. Theater. At the Embassy Theater. Yeah, um, he's actually going to be there. Oh, it's him? Yeah, uh, they're going to do the film. And him and I think it's the cousin of Pedro. Uncle. Yeah. Or Uncle Rico. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. Does it take place in Indiana? Is that where they're from? No, it's, I think it was out in Idaho. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was Idaho. But Look at that just, church. Yeah. Coffee. Well, that's got to be at least 20 years old now, right? 20, 25 years old, I think. That's pretty old. Yeah, it's cool. Wow, Probably 2007. We it. Oh, we were in high school, I think. Mm -hmm. Were you? 2004. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's since I was 20 years old. 19 years? I remember watching it and saying, my God, this is the worst piece of crap I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe I wasted an hour and a half watching this. But then in the days following, we just kept commenting about it and reciting some of the lines. And I said, I got to go back and watch that again. And then I did watch it again, and then I got it. It said, gets better really every time you watch it. It's a great movie. <laughs> it's awful, but, but I just, hated it the first time I saw it. It's, it's so bad, it's genius. First stop is to get Andy from the airport. I forgot about him. Yeah, he's flying in on a later flight, and we're gonna grab him and then head over to headquarters. 87 degrees outside. Well, look who decided to Howdy. Hello, hello. How you doing, bud? Hello. 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 I get my own section. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Is it vintage plexi? Uh, yes. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> you sure, Steve? I don't know. You know, I was going to ask for something else, but you know, yeah. fine. If I have to use There's no glass here, right? This is, this no, is closed? Okay. Right That's all I would have needed to do is go in here. We've had people run right into it, so. Oh, 
What's up, boss? How you doing? How's it going? Good to see you. Likewise. Hello again. Yeah, and so we'll see. Well, I mean, all. we might make a sound out of it. We might uh, use some, but not all. But... Know, yeah. Well, if it doesn't sound good, it's definitely my fault. So. <laughs> it's on you. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Marshall to Marshall, PRS and PRS. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Spoiling. Yeah, we got stuff, so we thought we'd use it. Is this a 61? 63, I three? think we figured. Yeah, or two. Damn. Yeah. One of those three-year spans. Yeah, it's good times. So you've got everything going at once. Besides the two amps that don't have cables in them right now, which will well, that that'll we'll get figured out. Yeah, don't worry. Let's magic. So yeah. Blink your eyes. Well, and that. We normally do. We usually do four amps if it's on us to do whatever, and so we can mix and match with some stuff. So it's nice to be able to have like a couple different flavors to come up with something. Uh, so this is sort of a variation on that. I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Are you, see? you even got a real Leslie? Oh, I'm in there. Yeah, we don't have a lot of Lex pedals, so I found that. What? Probably, so. I just noticed, I thought this was another bass amp at first. Holy yeah, crap. No, so if we All right, so yesterday and last night was a lot of fun. We went to the baseball game, which you can see the stadium behind me here. Um, after we did a little bit of a line check, wow. Getting to sit at a real like session player station like that was so cool. It's a little stressful not having any of my own stuff because you, you know what it's like. You have your personal connection to your gear. You know exactly what, what it can and can't do and having to kind of rediscover new gear and then be able to perform it and uh, record with it. It's a little stressful, but it's been like super fun getting to play all of the new stuff. It's funny, I asked for a Strymon Lex because I was like, yeah, this could use, this song could use like an organ type of pass. And then I show up and there's like a real Leslie cab behind me. Like it doesn't get any cooler than that. And I'm just, I'm just so excited for today. We're going to go in at about 10 o'clock and be there till five. Um, we're going to meet all the people in the class and we're just going to go hit it. I'm excited. Um, we're going to head over there and get on the showroom floor. The showroom floor. We're not at NAMM yet. So yeah, we're going to head out there. We're going to get on the studio. I'm going to try to film as much as I can. I want to try to keep a camera rolling and get a, um, a full mix of my, uh, my, monitor, my monitor mix. So we're going to try to figure that out on the spot. Let's see how it goes. From comedy. I'm excited. Tell us how you're feeling going into the session. I warmed up. I had to relearn all the harmonies, which was a little stressful because I haven't sung them in a long time. But I feel good. And we never had like a real good recording of this, so how exciting is that? We've played this song since first floor. 20 The first show. 14. 2012. Oh yeah, 2012. But it came time. out in 2014. Hold on, wait, I'll get the door. I'll get this one too. Okay, who's ready? Me! Good talk, everybody. <laughs> Break! How was your workout? Great, great. I had the whole gym to myself. It was perfect. Overlooking the city. Nice. Was Johnny Appleseed in there? No, he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a... Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Nice Hi. Hi. So, yeah, we're just uh, going through what we're doing here and uh, talking through what everyone's uh, looking to get out of the class so we're super excited to have Jessica and her band here to uh, record some stuff for us so um, we're excited know. yeah <laughs> thanks for awesome. being here with us when it goes back to that go ahead keep going so that's cool take a good look she's leaving <laughs> I need one of those for home. <laughs> okay, so quick tour of guitar world here. I have none of my own gear, as I said, so this is the pedal board that I walk into. Boss TU3, uh, J Rocket Archer, UA Starlight. This is a four amp switcher. So you could s select any of the four amps at the same time. 
and uh, switch between them, mix and match them. We had all four active yesterday at Soundcheck, and um, the amps are. This is a PRS, this is the new Hendrix amp that they just came out with. This is a, I think, 69 Plexi. My Marshall uh, dating isn't great, but it's a vintage JMP. Um, over there we have the real Leslie. I asked for a Lex, and I wound up with a real Leslie. First world problems here at Sweetwater. I'm hoping we get to use that. That's going to be really fun. Cabinets and combo amps. So this is the dream in the ISO booth. Um, last time I was going through one amp in here, but now the two heads in there, the JMP is going through this basket weave uh, 412 cab. And all of these, uh, Sean the engineer really likes these new um, Aerodyne 57s. Well, they were they actually predated the 57, but these are like the modern reissues and a 121 ribbon. Early 60s AC30, which is freaking dream amp. It is a JMI four input, the F86 preamp channel on here, and total boner material. It's got the vintage blue speakers in it. I don't know if that'll. And this one is a first for me. This is one of those new Tweed 57 Twins that um, Fender put out. I've never actually played one of these yet. And what I'm hearing in my mix is just a blend of all four of these, but it's gonna be quite epic. I'm excited. Let's talk about guitars. Yep. Do I swap the Tele out for a Strat? You're not using the Tele out. Instead. I don't know what this is. It's a Strat. Just knock the E string out of the out of the slot. Well, we can't have nice things. Shot. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna replace that telly with this. So this is a custom shop strat that I've never played before that I'm gonna put in the boat here. And I'm gonna swap out this telly. I mean, it's a good telly, but it just has a little bit of a sitaring that I'm not liking, and I think this song needs a little bit thicker of a sound. They look like they're taking a test, don't they? <laughs> they're in school. This is an R9, 2014. How's that look in the light? Beautiful. No cold sunburst for nothing. This thing sounded the best yesterday at um, at the line check. Custom Shop 335. Nylon saddles and nylon nut. I'm usually not crazy about those, but this thing is loud and clear. Felt really great, sounded really great yesterday. This, I believe there's no cereal on this, so I believe that this is a, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say, maybe late 60s, single pickup SG. I haven't played this a ton yet, but it seems like, it seems like it's gonna kick ass. All the checking, you get the checking on there? Nice beat and worn. All right, so this is baseline here. Chachi Calamaro over here, what are we going with? Hello everybody, well of course I got uh, one of my favorite Rickenbackers, this beauty that they loaned me here. Absolutely gorgeous. You said this one's like yours from the late 80s? Yeah, this is actually I think even a little bit earlier. Um, this is, has the, um, does not have the Ricco sound input on it, just a regular standard um, output, but it sounds and feels beautiful. It's re really, really gorgeous. Uh, short scale like I like. Uh, and they've got me running through one of my favorites, which is the Hazel Rig uh, Industries VDI, the Direct, which is absolutely a perfect combination with the Rickenbacker. Just so really they sent us one of these for a loaner for a while that we had in the studio at mm -hmm. home, right? So yeah. what what is it that you like about the Tube DI? It's just really, really warm and punchy. Uh, whether I'm playing uh, my Rickenbacker in the studio or I tend to do a lot of tracking for Jessica on my Hofner bass because it's very percussive sounding. I like that. Um, and the Hazelrig VDI just kind of brings out the warmth, the roundness of that bass, as well as the Rickenbacker. The Rickenbacker, of course, is known for its its punchy and bright sound. And using the Hazelrig uh, VDI, it just kind of amplifies the sweetness in it. So it really gets a great sound. I was so happy when I walked in here yesterday and, and saw that on the floor. So it kind of made my day, and I'm excited to do some recording with it today. Cool. And this Jess said that it's like we're, we're at a zoo, except we're the animals. <laughs> You're in the cage. Put that boy in a cage. Here we have <laughs> classes in session with Sean in there. We'll head into acoustic land. This is such a nice living room. Mm -hmm. They got the lamp for some vibe. Mm -hmm. So what's your station like in here? 
So here's the little monitor console, which is awesome. And they have it perfectly labeled so that um, we can do our own mix as we go, which we worked on a little bit yesterday. Arguably the most important piece of the puzzle. Um, they're doing two mics on the acoustic and uh, one mic for my voice. Yesterday when we were sound checking, it was a little far. I felt like I was kind of playing like this, so they moved it all close. I'll call this the short people setup. <laughs> uh, and then my favorite part of this setup is this amazing Martin. Um, I've never played a guitar like this before. It is so punchy and so, so round, the sound. And um, I'm really excited because today we are doing a remake of the first song I ever released in 2014. <laughs> so almost 10 years later, you know, musicians out there, when you listen back to uh, music you recorded many years ago, I'm sure just like I do, you cringe because you've come such a long way in that time period. So I'm really excited to give what's one of our most popular live songs uh, a really new, interesting oh, yeah. twist here at Sweetwater with Sean producing it and um, with a fresh take on the instrumentation and the vocals and all that. So I'm really excited. Drum rig. Go. Um, similar to what we used for the session over the summer. Um, you don't have as good lighting this time, though. Unfortunately, I don't have the good lighting. Pro Masters kit, uh, Maple. We got the uh, 12 up top, 14, 16, 22 kick. This time, um, going with a 1966 Ludwig. It was the model that John Bottom used, so again. Who's that? Uh, you know, just some guy from a band. And, you know, England, Zeppelin, something, I don't know, some, some, some bl blimp thing. Um, but it's got a great pop, great uh, great sound to it. Aluminum snare, uh, they got the big snare on the bottom, whatnot, so sounds great. Zildjian's all up top, all Ks. Um, so I li ever since started playing with Jess, I like playing 15 hats, just so it adds a little... I thought there was only sound. two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 15 inch K hat, light hat, 19, usually I do a 16 and an 18, but uh, Sean turned me on to these and I am gonna have to turn myself and buy these because I love them. 19 Sweet Crash, 19 Dark Crash with a 22 inch ride. Play my Promark Neil Peart sticks, they're the only kinds I use and um, they can beat the hell out of them and they always sound good. Uh, DW Hardware, 5,000 hats, 5,000 kick. Uh, Remo heads and um, especially recording in this room because it is a very vibrant room to have um, some of the snare weights um, which they're just kind of dampen it a little bit kind of makes it a little more muddy compared to when they're off like that so you don't need the moon gels and yeah these are these heads have been worn a little bit which is what you want you don't want new heads when you're recording and then I think Sean said it's like 20 mics like not just on the kit but in the entire room yeah. you got there's, this this monstrosity here which like, like six on that thing. i feel like i'm like like a, a presidential speech in the 60s <laughs> talking out um it's the media mics the media mics yeah and the most important mic the drummer never has this mic it's the mic where i can actually talk to everybody and i don't have to yell so uh yeah that's the uh talk back the most important mic don't turn that one on on accident hey he's so essentially this one is now capturing Everything that's happening over here, you're getting the tom up top, you're getting a little bit of the kick, you're getting a little bit of the snare. It's kind of similar to the mic that's right here that's picking up everything. It's just a different angle. I think it's just another way of just grabbing the most important sounding elements of the song, which is the hat, the snare, the kick.
So this is the second verse uh, coming out of the second verse. So this is the third one on the second verse. <laughs> So I just got back to the hotel. I'm now icing my back because it's been torched lately. So today was such an amazing experience. We had such an awesome time recording. Probably the coolest experience of my guitar playing life was playing in that studio, playing all those amps. Um, no pedal board, no effects, just raw guitar tone. I got to use the real Leslie speaker, got to use a baritone. The new Hendrix amp from PRS, um, vintage Marshall JMP, uh, 63 Vox AC30. <sighs> it was a good time. Um, I think the session came out really good. All the stuff that you just heard was all the direct feed from my monitor mix. So I tapped out of my monitor mix right into the camera. So everything that you heard um, was what I was hearing. Sure, it's a little guitar heavy, but you got to hear yourself when you're tracking stuff. And the final product seems like it's coming out really great. We got a little sneak peek of what um, Sean was doing to things. And now tomorrow, I leave at 6 a.m. and fly out to Nam Because I'm a crazy person. I'll be flying out to Nam, landing there about 12 noon. And then I have until 5. Uh, I shot myself in the foot thinking that there was a Sunday show. Because there always has been a Sunday. Why they kept Thursday and ditched Sunday. I don't understand, but I had already booked my trip before double-checking that there was a Sunday NAMM show, so flying all the way out there for five hours, I'm sure I'm going to see some old friends, hopefully make some new ones, and I'm going to you know, have the camera with me, shoot around, see if I come up with anything cool, and then fly home. So for now, I'm going to bed. So good night. <laughs>